Throughout this exercise, you may want to refer to the documentation for AmpList and AmpYouTube. In the template for a recommended video, include an AMP YouTube component, the title of the video, the creator of the video, the video duration, and the video's publication date. While AMP YouTube is initializing, it should show a placeholder AMP image thumbnail whose URL comes from the server data. Wrap the template for the AMP list component in a div with class video. The AMP YouTube component should have a responsive layout, a width of 470 pixels, and a height of 280 pixels. The template of a recommended video can use an H2 tag for the title and paragraph tags for the video date, creator, and duration. Add an additional strong tag for the creator. Now, pause the video and complete this part. After this, we'll explain how to add skeleton loading to your sample. Now to add skeleton loading to your solution, add a div tag with a placeholder attribute to the Amplist component. Inside of the placeholder div, add another div with class placeholder container. Inside that div, add six more div tags, each with class placeholder vid. Each of those six divs should contain, you guessed it, three more div tags. Of those three, the first should have the class vid-pl and the other two should have class title-pl. Now pause the video and try this out. When you're done, the code for your mustache template should look like the HTML on your screen. The solution is also available at the link in your video description. And the code for the page layout skeleton will look like this. In this sample, we're only showing you one of the six identical skeleton loading containers. In your solution, of course, you should have the additional five containers. On the screen, you'll see also how the skeleton loading might look on your site. The solution also is available at the link in your video description. Now we know how to use AmpList to add dynamic content to our websites. We want to know how to ask the server to filter or sort the data for us. Let's say we were using an API endpoint that allowed us to request filtered or sorted data. Its URL might look like this. We don't want to use a separate endpoint for each way in which we want the data treated. Instead, typically we do this by adding a query string to the end of the URL. This lets us pass additional information to the server. In our example, if we wanted to just show products in the bikes category, we might use a URL like this. To sort data, we'd probably use a sort parameter. This might let us sort from high to low, descending, or from low to high, ascending. For example, to sort by the price in ascending order, we might use a URL like this. To use more than one parameter, separate them with an ampersand. Now we know how to use query parameters to get from the server the data that the user wants to see. But how do we do this within the Amplist component? How do we use query parameters there? We can do this to update the SRC property of the AmpList component in response to user actions. If the user selects certain filters or certain sorts, we can change the SRC property to change the URL to change the query parameters. This sounds like a perfect job for state variables and property bindings. This example shows how to combine AmpList with property bindings and state variables. The first time the page loads, we load all of the products. The state variables in product settings update when the user selects different options. Then, the source property updates using the values of the updated state variables. The AMP list component reaches out to the updated source address to download new data. The templates process that new data to create new HTML. And finally, that new content replaces the old content on screen. 